Welcome back to the True Crime Lounge podcast here on YouTube and Spotify. I do have a Patreon that you can join for early access to episodes scheduled to come out. I also have a merch shop for all your true crime gear. Also, happy St. Patrick's Day, y'all. For any updates on my channel or podcast, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you're watching from YouTube, hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Now, let's dive into today's episode, shall we? Today we're going to do something a little bit different than cases I typically talk about. I do like this one because it is older and it has more of a historical reference that I really love. Um, oh yeah, have y'all met Dead Fred? It was a gift from my friend Gabby who knows me very well. And she got me, not Gabby, Bethany. My friend Bethany and she got me Dead Fred. Um, if y'all are watching that, I'm sorry by the way. I didn't mean to get you guys mixed up. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about the case of Gertrude Tompkins Silver, who also went by Tommy. She disappeared on October 26, 1944, and she was the only woman Air Force Service pilot member to go missing during World War II. She, Tommy was born Gertrude Veland Tompkins on October 16, 1911 in Jersey City, New Jersey. She is the only daughter of Breland Tompkins and Laura Tompkins, and she was raised the youngest of the family. As a child, she had a stuttering problem. Her family would send her to live with her family on a farm in West Virginia when she was a kid. They hoped that new surroundings might help her overcome her social and poor school performance. She attended a horticultural school out afterward and was raised to ghosts for a period of time. She returned to work for a smooth on company with her dad while living in New York in New York City area in the nineteen thirties. Come on. I don't know what happened. My computer went crazy for a second, y'all. The family uh she fell in love with Stanley Kolandorsky. Kul- who was an American aviator who was killed during World War II during the, in the early 1940s. Tompkins was the only, was a member of the Eagle Squadron 71. Was well, T- Stanley? I don't know why I said Tompkins. Stanley was a member of the Eagle Squadron 70, 71, which made up of American pilots who volunteered to fly against Germany for England before America entered the war. After returning to the in- returning to England to fight, Gertrude began taking flying lessons. Built in May of 1941, she received notice that her one and only love had been shot down by the Nazis, and his body is being recovered in the area. Her loved ones believed that she developed an interest in flying after his death. She took less. She took private lessons joining the Women's Air Force Service Pilots, also known as WASP, which I will be referring to for the remainder of this video, because that's a breath of words to say. Shortly thereafter, shortly thereafter, she reported to Avenger Field in Sweetwater, Texas. I've been there, by the way, um, where she um, famed, um, or well, I've been to Sweetwater, Texas, um, but in Sugarland, Texas too. There's also a sweet white Alabama that I'm from. Um, anyway. Uh, back to the episode, shall we? Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Where, um, the famed aviator Jacqueline began to train women in the f- flight with the United States of Military's approval. At the, at the only female military base in U.S. history, she trained for 24 weeks with 108 hours of flying, flight time. 30 hours simulated flight training, 5 hours of physical training each week, and 108 hours of instruction in navigation, communication, weather, aircraft, engine, and air transport command procedures. The WASPs were employed from 1942 to not. Through 1944 during the war and referred to as fly girls. After graduating, they were with flying colors. Gertrude was eventually one of 126 was chosen to attend the Advanced Pursuit School, the Army's top gun training um, school, where only the best male pilots trained prior to combat, and she learned how to pilot 
the pilot flighter planes for pursuit, as they were called at the time of like the Thunderbolt and Mustang. Nice. All the all through all through training, she stuttered. She tried to keep her keep it to herself and hide it. But after her first flight in a shiny silver P B P fifty one, which blazed across the sky with fifteen hundred horsepower engine at, at over four hundred miles, she never ever stuttered again. As a wasp, she was finally unchained from the ailment that nagged every part of her for almost thirty years. She would marry Army Technical Surge Sergeant Henry Mann Silver in September nineteen forty four. Henry's sister died after giving birth at a red lock, and he was preparing to adopt the child in 1944. He had known Gertrude several years before, prior to their wedding, and some believed that she was still mourning for her lost aviator at the time of the marriage. Her father adored Henry and thought of him as a son. Gertrude returned to Watts two days after the wedding, and Henry never saw her again. Um, and I just realized I'm talking without my headphones in. So, I apologize if this is a bit noisier than normal. Um, but, she, um, she was also not wearing her engagement ring when they, they were part of the protection, nor did she use the, her married name. Marriage um, by Wasp was frowned upon, um, and she may have been afraid to live with lost her job. Gertrude was scheduled to fly a P-51 Mustang fighter plane, and the hottest flight at the time from Minesville to Inglewood, California, now to LAX. Why is it called LAX, by the way, guys? I don't could. I'm just always been curious about that. If you know why they're called LAX, please let me know in the comments. I'm just, I'm just very naturally nosy like that. So, anyway, to from LAX to Palm Springs, California, on October 26, 1944. She, um... Uh, She planned to she so she planned to fly the plane to New Jersey during the following days, but Wasp was required to make stopovers the night at night to avoid flying during those hours. On October 26, 1942, 1944, at 3:42, Gertrude taxed taxi to one side of the runway prior to her depart, departure to have a cockpit cockpit hatch repaired. She apparently departed from Minesfield. Um, to for Palm Springs, October 26, 1944. Flying a North American P 51D 15 15 NA Mustang serial number assigned to the 5th Ferrying Group 601 601st Ferrying Squadron, destined for New Jersey. She never arrived to Palm Springs due to some reporting errors, and the tower and air traffic controllers had no copies of her flight for the day, and she was not reported as missing until October 30th. Four days after her presumed disappearance, the military initiated extensive search for Gertrude in her plane, but no evidence was supported, suspected, crashed, or was discovered. She was classified as a missing and presumed dead in November 1944. Henry mourned his wife, assumed death, until his passing in 1965. There has never been any evidence covered to suggest that Gertrude served until 1944. The WASP was disbanded shortly after her disappearance, and it wasn't until the 1970s that they recognized her as an active duty armed member of the U.S. Army Air Force and permitted to receive veterans benefits. In 2010, the Alder Watts, including Gertrude, were awarded the Congressional Gold Medal, and Gertrude's family members met the airline 
archaeologist G. Patrick M Macha Macca in 1950s. Macca believed that her aircraft crash is the in the shallow water of the San Monica Bay is buried underneath the layers of sand. So, the sonar imagery showed an object buried in the general vicinity, to, vicinity in 2001, and others believe that Gertrude may have crashed the plane in the mountains of Palm Springs. Palm Springs has mountains? Sorry guys, I'm not from California, so I didn't mean for that to sound as, as arrogant as that was, but anyway. And this was a theory that has been just never dismounted. Gertrude's case remains unsolved. What happened to her, her is unknown. And her remains are still a mystery. Some believe that she went down after becoming too distracted and disoriented by a relatively new P-51D. The military planes of Tompkins Air did not have black boxes. There was no radar to monitor her journey. And there was no flight for her. No flight. No flight plan for her. After she disappeared, flight plans for each pilot were required rather than a group plane to the military search for 30 days and looked fruitlessly to a nearby mountains. During October 2009, MAST, um, Gertrude Tompkins expedition searched for the aircraft and during the searches, the U.S. Air, Air Force the, um, T-33 jet training missing since October 15, 1955. There has been several searches throughout the years, but all efforts to locate all possible crash sites in Santa Monica have been unsuccessful. Marianne Virgis in 1991 has a 1991 books concerning the wasps on several wings claimed that Gertrude remains were located inside the crashed aircraft her set after her disappearance, and the story was untrue, as there was no record of any pilot fitting Gertrude's description of who was discovered in the years after 1944. Expedition Unknown a show on Discovery Channel aired an episode about her disappearance in May 2019. Gertrude's family members would meet. But that is it for today's episode. Um, what do y'all think happened to her? Um, I am curious. I love history and stuff, so I'm very curious. So this is very fun for me to talk about right here. But as always, I'll see y'all next time. And y'all have a great day.